welcome to Overtime Hockey Talk. My name is Mark Paul, and my co-host Justin Baker and I are here for you as the NHL has vanished from your life for now. But don't worry, we're going to talk about it. We are your NHL counselors here to uh, assist you when there's, you know, hockey has just kind of abandoned you. And uh, Justin, how do you feel about that? I feel depressed that people have to turn to us, but... (laughs) There's worse things to turn to. That's very true. We'll give you that. I have heard that uh, the alcohol sales are through the roof right now. Yeah, you know, another thing, this is funny too, so Kirsten and I, obviously with the quarantine going on, you know, we've been trying to look for ways to keep ourselves entertained, right? And uh, a bunch of friends of ours are um, taking up to Nintendo Switches, and playing, you know, games like Mario Kart and, you know, Animal Crossing apparently is a big one. I I don't see the appeal in it, but whatever. Um, and so we they we started looking for Nintendo Switch. We were thinking about buying them. Every store, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, everything online is sold out right now. And right now they're just, of course, people are jacking up the prices on eBay. So we can't even can't even do that. Can't even get one. I know. Uh, I mean, Xbox. You know we've. Katie and I, we found some uh, some pretty fun games on the Xbox that we can play like local. So mm-hmm. we we played some game called Overcooked, where you got to like make these meals and like go super fast <laughs> and like run all over the screen and the like the map moves on you. So then it you know it, it makes it challenging to do what you you need to do. It, that's that's been a really fun game for us to play. I mean we we burned hours of, of that game and then we we beat it. And she's like, is that it? Is that all? The game's <laughs> over? It's like, yeah, it's okay. There's a second one. So <laughs> we got to get the second one. Uh, yeah, definitely just, you know, we've actually been going on hikes every day too. Discovered all these new trails. They, they're obviously not new. They've they've been there the whole time, but uh, trails that are, you know, within 30 minutes of here that uh, I really had never taken any time to go check out. So, hey, the quarantine happens and what do you do? You just go for a hike. All right. All right. So on today's show, though, uh, we are going to just kind of analyze this NHLPA player poll. Uh, some things that, no surprise, there there actually was quite a few, like, all right, same exact results from the year before, big shocker, uh, but I think we'll uh, we'll offer some of our own commentary on it, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just kind of run through it all and... As conversation tends to go, we'll just we'll just kind of run with it. So, uh, the first section of this player poll is like an on ice section, and they ask who is the best forward. And I don't think it's any surprise that the top forward is Connor McDavid, sixty eight point three five percent of the vote. Uh, he's just running away with this now. I mean, I think the year before Crosby was much closer to McDavid, uh, but now McDavid running away with it. Crosby is second. 14.9, McKinnon at 6.6, and Kucherov at 2.8. Uh, and then there was a 7.9% for the other players. So what what are your what are your thoughts? Is, is McDavid, I, I mean, I don't, I don't think there's too much debate here. No, no, there's no debate. I mean, it, it's obviously Connor McDavid and, uh, you know, Crosby, uh, well-deserved second place. I mean, I think last year he had... About 17%, so drops a couple points there. But, And I, th- I think that's mostly due to Nathan McKinnon being as dominant as he has been for the Avalanche. A couple people probably swapped some votes out there. Um, the one guy I'm kind of surprised not to see on this list with maybe a higher percentage is Leon Dreisaitl. Or, you know, I mean, or maybe even a Patrick Kane. You know, I think for guys that, you know, are, have been at the top of their game for so long, um, you know, just a little bit of love, and I think maybe you know you could chalk that up to a lot of the the Leon Dreisaitl Edmonton fans, you know, giving their love towards towards Connor over the two of them. I guess when you got to pick one or the other, so. Well, it's a player poll, so the fans are definitely not voting in this. Right. I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, I'm sure. Yes, I'm sure they would. Uh, yeah, I mean, I I would also think Dreisaitl probably the people who would. Pick McDavid, go well. McDavid's better than Drysaitel, but yeah, Drysaitel. You know, if this was like, who is? I, I don't. Yeah, I don't, I, it's because each each person gets one vote. 
I think if everybody got like vote your one, two, three, that might, you know, he, there's a chance that he might appear in there. But also, and maybe it shows that a lot of players do see Dry Seidel as like, well, you know, you're the, you're so good because you have McDavid alongside you. Like, you're the Malkin to yeah. Davis Crosby. Sure. Yeah. Uh, I think the defenseman is a little bit more interesting. Uh, in terms of, I mean, obviously there's there's five guys who get considerable votes, uh, but top defensemen, uh, starting at number five, you've got Brent Burns still makes the list, 6.5%. That is surprising to me. Uh, we can come back to that. Drew Doughty, 6.54%. Uh, ironically, both of them get the same percentage as the best defenseman, uh, seeing as their, their history together. And then Roman Yossi, 9%. And the top two, you've got John Carlson at 21% and Victor Hedman edging everyone out by by a considerable margin at almost 38%. Wow. Yeah. Uh, Victor Hedman last year, you know, he, he came away with this one, too, with 31%. And Dowdy came in at number two with 20%. But, um, you know, Brett Burns, again, last year he, he made the list, drops, uh, you know, probably loses about half of – his percentage points and gets, you know, Roman Yossi jumps him. But it, you know, John Carlson, obviously, I think everybody knew how underrated he was. Um, but I think now because of the production uh, that he's having this year, I think now a lot of people are starting to take note. A lot of other players are like, man, this guy's actually, actually pretty good. And uh, the one well, name though, I'm surprised. And, and last you know, year, last year he put up 70 plus points, 75 yeah, points. Right? Still freaking good. But it's, it's funny to me because like Brent Burns, we know, there's lapses in his game, right? At at when you talk about the defensive side of things, you know, he's still prominent. He can still put up some points and still shoots the puck a lot. But um, one guy I'm surprised not to see maybe on this list when you talk about Brent Burns making the top five, I'm surprised Eric Carlson maybe didn't get some votes over a guy like Brent Burns. Well, I'm surprised that Mark Giordano won the Norris Trophy last year and he's not in here. Right. Yeah. Granted, there there is an extra eighteen point six five percent that is unaccounted for because it goes to other players. So there's a chance that they had 5% of the vote, which is still pretty significant. Uh, they just only show the top five, which I wish they showed everybody. Like I, I wish they showed every single vote because I want to see like who, you know, who voted for Yuri Fisher as the top or not Yuri Fisher. I don't know why I said <laughs> Yuri Fisher. I was <laughs> Yuri Fisher. Where did that name just come from? The Detroit Red Wings, stop it. <laughs> oh, jeez. Why, why am I totally blanking on the worst defenseman in the NHL? The worst defenseman? Uh, boy, he's that's on, a good question. He's on the Red Wings. On the Red Wings? Why, can't it, why am I completely blanking here? Uh, that's how long it's been boy, since I watched hockey. You know Trevor who I'm talking Daly? about. Um, <laughs> no, you know who I'm talking This is like somebody sitting there and they're saying, I've, I've done this before in a podcast, like in so many podcasts where somebody's Danny DeKaiser? trying to think of something and they're like, it's on the tip of their tongue and you're sitting there listening to it going, you freaking idiot. It's this. How do you not know this? It's, <laughs> it's so obvious who it is. And it, when I say the name, you're going to go, oh, yeah. How did I not think of Jonathan Erickson? Uh <laughs> By far the worst defenseman in the National Hockey League. Anyways, yeah, I like. Yeah. I just want to see who who makes a joke out of this poll and who actually takes it seriously. So I want to see all the names that were voted for. I I feel like that would make this more fun. I'm gonna absolutely. I'm gonna put in a request. Release <laughs> the entire results. Uh, okay, let's go to uh, any anything else you want to hit? Best defenseman? Nah, I'm good. Let's go. Okay, best goaltender. We have. Uh, well, I'll let you take best goaltender. Go for it. Yeah, Carey Price edging everyone out again this year for a second year in a row. Forty-one uh, percent last year, I believe he came in around twenty-nine-ish, thirty percent. Uh, Andre Vasilevsky moving up the charts with second at seventeen percent. Moving up the followed- charts. <laughs> I just like the way you said that. Thank you. Uh, followed by Mark Andre Fleury and Sergey Bobrovsky, which shockingly, so last year we had at number two Pekka Rene on this list obviously nowhere to be found in the top four here um you know could be somewhere else in that 26.8 percent that we don't see but it's it's surprising to me that 
Carey Price has such a larger gap this year when statistically he's maybe, you know, over the last couple seasons hasn't been Carey Price-esque. Yeah. And maybe that's more to the team in front of him than anything. You know, when you look at a guy like Sergey Bobrovsky, for example, who is just having a, a terrible year in Florida, but somehow manages to, you know, get 5.6% of the votes. Maybe people think that he'll, you know, eventually come around. Um, but I, I would figure for a guy that, you know, won the Vesna, um, plays, you know, just such a, a great game. Andre Vasilevsky isn't, you know, a little bit higher in terms of the amount of percentage points he's getting. Yeah, I. The interesting thing about this particular the goaltending poll is you have, uh, like, you've got five hundred and fifteen people voted on the best goaltender, and twenty six point eight percent of them didn't pick one of these four guys. So there's a huge percentage of, like, a huge split amongst so many goaltenders. And I don't know if maybe players tend to pick a guy who gets them personally. Like, I I mean, just through years of playing, I know that there's certain goaltenders that it was like, frick, that guy's playing. Like, guys get, like, certain (laughs) goalies just get in your head. You know, like, goalies where you're like, even when you think you've beat them, they just come back with some miraculous diving across the crease and knock it out with the the skinniest part of their sticks where the puck hits out, like crap like that. Where a goaltender just seems to be like, this guy's the greatest goaltender of all time against me. And so I wonder how players vote. Like, do they go, well, this goalie is the one who has my number? Yeah. Or that's... are they just saying, you know, obviously if we want to just go purely based on statistics, well, we could just consult statistics. So I, I wonder if it's, you know, who's the hardest goalie to score against personally is is kind of maybe more how these guys are taking this. I don't know. Yeah, yeah. And I think, too, there's a lot, uh, a lot to do with, you know, other teams now having, you know, these prominent starters like your Ben Bishops, your Darcy Kempers, guys that are just, you know, Connor Hollibucks, the guys that are starting to emerge as quality goaltenders, right? And so I think you'll you'll see a lot of guys splitting their votes, and and I do think a lot of players too. They they tend to, you know, I I would say if they've been with the franchise and been with that starter long enough, they'll be like, okay, I'm, this guy's the best goalie in the world, and give it to them. Yes, and you know if they did release all the results, which I would love if they did, but let's say they release all the results, and you are Martin Jones in San Jose, and you have no votes. You're going to go, what the frick, guys? <laughs> There's 20 people on your team that vote, and none of them voted for you. So right. I guess that's maybe why they they keep those a secret, as they don't want everybody to know who yeah. the league... Like, you'd be able to figure out pretty quick who the league thought were the worst goaltenders <laughs> in that list. The forwards, not so much. Forwards and defensemen, I mean, who cares? You know, if if... A several like a several players don't get the best vote. I don't think that you know people are walking around with delusions of grandeur, thinking that they're the best forward when they're a fourth line guy. You know, I don't think right. that that's that's a problem. Uh, okay, so we the next question is: If you need to win one game, who's the one player, any position you would want on your team? Three point three percent went to Patrice Bergeron. Four point one percent go to Nathan McKinnon, who's never won anything, uh, so that's interesting. Uh, Connor McDavid, thirty point five percent, has won one playoff round, and then finally we get to first place. Sidney Crosby, forty four percent, who has three Stanley Cups, scored the game winning goal in overtime in a gold medal game, and, uh, and to to me is the runaway pick, and he and he should be for this one. Uh, what are your thoughts on the guys that were picked for this particular portion? Yeah, I, I'm with you. I, I'm surprised Sidney Crosby doesn't have a larger percentage of votes, only because, one, we talk about, yes, Connor McDavid, obviously the most talented player um, in terms of forwards, but hasn't won anything, right? You, you've got the one playoff round, and that's it, and Crosby's got, got all the hardware, you know, all the accolades, and, and you know he's always shown up in the clutch, and so why would you not want a guy who's still at the top of his game to be that one guy for you? Now, I, I understand why maybe we don't see, you know, goaltenders on here. Obviously, defensemen, you know, they're not really going to get it done because this is it's a it's a goal scorers league now. And so, um, 
you know, maybe one guy I would say I'm surprised not to see on here would be maybe a, uh, um, you know, an Alex Ovechkin. But again, you look at how little the votes were in terms of, you know, 3.3% for Bergeron. And so that other missing 18%, I'm sure those guys got in there somewhere. But, you know, maybe an OV I might put on here. Maybe even a Ryan O'Reilly at this point. Um, yeah, but, yeah, the way he played in the playoffs last year. Yeah, but no doubt my, my runaway winner, I would have at least expected to have at least 50% of the votes would have been Sidney Crosby for sure. Yeah, you know, I think 20 years ago, I feel like it would have been uh, maybe, maybe a little more. Uh, 20 years ago, Dominic Hasek, Martin Brodeur would be on this yeah. list. 100%. Why don't you see goalies on this list? Is it because, have like, are those two guys, if you took both of them and put them now, I think they would they would still be as dominant. I I think Hashik would still be unbelievable if you oh, if you took him then and you put him now. It's the one position where I now you know the as we you go too far back and and you kind of run into guys that played a total like it was just a completely different game. They didn't even have the same kind of equipment. Uh, but it's interesting that there are no goal, goalies anywhere close to this list. When really those goaltenders, I mean, if you get a goalie who's hot, you don't lose. I mean, right. if your goalie doesn't make a mistake, you don't lose, right? If if your forwards make a mistake, you still have a chance of winning. So ultimately, if you know if your goaltender is the best player on the ice, you win. Yeah, more times than not, that's interesting that's the case. that, that uh, nobody nobody wanted a goalie for that particular question. Uh, okay, let's uh, let's go to the next one. Who is the most complete player? Uh, a couple, the same names appearing. Crosby at number one, forty five percent, which is impressive. Twenty five percent for Bergeron, seven and a half for Barkov, and five three for your boy Ryan O'Reilly. Yeah, I'm surprised his percentage isn't a little bit higher. Um, I mean, we we know what what the guys at the top bring. I mean, obviously Sidney Crosby can do it at both ends and do it so well. But Ryan O'Reilly's really stepped up, I think, lately, and he's he's kind of shown that he's always been this good for so long since his time in Colorado. But um, you know, Bergeron, I, I I don't know. I mean, we know how good defensively he is, but to me, I, I his offensive side of the game, I I don't know if I'd put that as as complete as a guy like maybe Ryan O'Reilly or I don't know even well Barkov, even a guy like, yeah Barkov for sure. Yeah, I mean, you know, obviously. Bergeron's been been doing pretty well playing alongside Marchand and you know and Pasta, but you know before that he wasn't really the def- dominant offensive player that he is you know right now. And you know is that because he's playing with guys like Pasta now? I don't know, but um, yeah, I mean you can't argue with him being on the list regardless. And to me, I think you know obviously Sidney Crosby is again the runaway winner in this category for me. So um, kind of surprised not to see a couple other guys you know, a little bit higher in terms of percentage points when, you know, I mean, surprisingly, no Connor McDavid on here. I, I mean, we know he doesn't really have the defensive side of his game tuned in yet, but um, I'm surprised he maybe didn't get a few more votes just because of how good he is offensively. Yeah, no uh, no Kopitar, who's won two of the last four Selkie trophies as well. Uh, you know, it's yep. funny, Crosby has no Selkie trophies. <laughs> That's true. And you know why? Because the Selkie Trophy is the like, well, you aren't that good, but you're good defensively and you put up points, so we're going to give you this trophy. Like, yeah. in reality, Crosby, like, he probably should have a bunch of Selkie Trophies. <laughs> it's just got, like, I mean, yeah, this it's got to be the weirdest trophy. The weirdest trophy. Because it's, yeah, okay, what does it mean to be really good defensively. What, you're a good forward, but you don't put up a lot of points? Kopitar put up 92 points the year he won it a couple years ago. But uh, Yeah. I mean, the, I, I got you know the privilege of watching Pavel Dadzuk do it so well for so many years, but like you knew every time this guy, I mean, I watched him so many times steal the puck from somebody and just turn the play around, and he still managed to put up 90 points, you know, 80 oh, yeah, points. 97 points the Two years in a row that he he won it. He won in the third year, seventy points. But yeah. outside of Kopitar with ninety two and Datsuk with two ninety two point ninety two point seasons, no one has had more than uh, more than ninety points. 
Only one player with more than 80 points that has won this award since Fedorov won it in 95-96 with 107 points. Of course, he won it with 120 points as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just it's funny. It even go it goes back to it goes back to the Bob Gainey stuff. Bob Gainey won this award four times in a row in its creation, and he had 31 points, 38 points, 33 points, and 47 points. <laughs> Doug Jarvis won it in 83-84 when guys were putting up hundreds. Like Gretzky literally putting up hundreds of points. <laughs> Doug Jarvis had 13 goals and 29 assists. Stop the following it. year, Craig Ramsey had 12 goals, 21 assists. <laughs> That's just crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's. Uh, it seems as though this trophy, this trophy is a very strange, strange trophy. Uh, some guys have won it who you're like, okay, yeah, totally. Uh, another guy like uh, Rick Murr, me, meager in 89-90. Don't even know, never heard of the guy before, not once. He's a 36-year-old center for the St. Louis Blues. He scored eight times, eight times, and had 25 points and won the Selkie. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What a stupid trophy. <laughs> All right, uh, maybe we're maybe we're giving more. Uh, it's it's becoming a little bit more thought out with the advanced statistics. That there's at least some like okay, now you know you can you can point to some things that aren't goals and assists that point to a good defensive player. But my goodness, how does a guy with 25 points win an award when <laughs> other people have uh, over 100 points? And many people have over 100 points. That's crazy. Anyways, uh, best trash talker is uh, no surprise. Brad Marchand, Drew Doughty, Ryan Reeves, Patrick Maroon, and uh, we're just gonna do worst trash talker as well because this is just they go hand in hand. Worst trash talker also Brad Marchand, Drew Doughty, uh, PK Subban makes this list, and then really random Nick Cousins sneaks in on here. Yeah. I, Nick Cousins is a weird one to just kind of quietly pop in there, but you know, there's a there's a lot of stuff. Obviously, we don't hear on the ice that uh, maybe the mics will pick up per se. But uh, as I'm sure there's there's a whole bunch of things said. The one I will say the one name I am surprised not to see on this list, given the little uh, quote unquote trash talking rivalry between Drew Doughty, is um, you know Matthew Kachuk. Not to see his name pop up on this list because he's been known as a bit of an agitator, a bit of a trash talker lately. It's true. Uh, now, in terms of other votes, I mean, best trash talker, there was 45% other people voted. For the worst trash talker, 70% of the vote went elsewhere. Uh, and, yeah. and definitely the fewest amount of people voted for that one. Only 321 out of, I think, best forward was like 560 people. So, I mean, it's, uh, you know, not everybody's voting on that. Some people probably just go, this is, I don't know. I don't care. I, I would feel a lot of people probably with these two categories, probably outside of like your guys like Drew Doughty and Brad Marsh, and I probably vote for guys on their team, especially for worst trash talker. They're just trying to uh, to get a rise out of someone on their team if they do happen to see the results. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. And now I, I really like this next question. Uh, it's different than anything we've seen, I think, before. Of all players, past or present, who would you pay to see play? Uh, the only player who made it to the top four that currently plays is Connor McDavid, 7.8%. And you've got Lemieux, Mario Lemieux, that is, not Claude Lemieux, uh, at 9.24%, Bobby Orr, 15%, and Gretzky, 31.8%. Uh, I, think that's, I think that's a pretty cool list. Uh, anybody that you would pay to see play that you've never seen play before? Yeah, I honestly, and, you know, there's a whole other 36-ish percentage of, you know, votes that obviously aren't shown here. But I would I would honestly say there'd be a lot of, like, guys from an early era of hockey, right? Guys like your Gordy Howes, maybe your Tim Hortons or Terry Sawchucks, guys that, you know, I grew up idolizing but never really saw play outside of, you know, little clippets of videos online. And I would definitely love to, to see those guys play. Obviously, I've, I've watched Mario Lemieux. I've seen bits of Wayne Gretzky. 
Um, you know, Bobby Orr would be one of those guys too, again, that, you know, I never really saw play live at all. And I would just love to see him, see him play. Yeah. Or like a Maurice Richard or some, someone that absolutely just dominated. Uh, I think it would also be really fun to be able to go and watch games from like the thirties and the, the twenties where like things were just developing just to like, if you, we could just go back in time and go, huh, they were freaking horrible. <laughs> or like, you know, or how good were they really, you know, would, yeah. I, I don't think that we're like, obviously guys that were athletic then would be athletic now. You know, I think, I think that given the, the right advantages, guys who are good then could also be good now. But, uh, yeah, I, I, th- I think it would be, it would be fun to be able to go and see some of those games. Uh, it is, it, I mean, that's actually something that you can do right now. NHL.com, I believe has, you can go, go back and watch a bunch of old games and they have it all for free right now. So my dad was telling me, Oh, I was watching this game from the 79 playoffs, so like the Bruins and the Canadians, the one where, uh, you know, at the beginning when there used to be Coach's Corner Rip, uh, <laughs> when like it shows Don Cherry like putting his hands out and clapping and like putting his hands out, you know, kind of like looking at the refs, like what the heck? Uh, that was always like one of the, one of his things in the little montage before it started. And uh, he was watching that game. He's like, dude, that was one of the best games I've ever seen. <laughs> he watched the whole thing. <laughs> That's great. So, uh, okay, next one. Another another kind of cool question. Would you like to see players' personalities expressed on their equipment? And if so, how? Uh, helmet, 3%. Sticks, 4%. Skates, got a whopping 40%. Uh, your thoughts on this? It's interesting. Um, I honestly am surprised I don't see helmets with a lot more, um, you know, more of the votes just because... Um, I think from a a goalie standpoint, right, that's where goalies get to express themselves a little bit, right? They get to put their own twist, their own, you know, image, brand, whatever you want to call it on on their helmet. A lot of guys obviously do this with, you know, putting team logos or doing something cool. But, you know, I would I would think as a player, you know, maybe you would you would always have looked back at the goaltenders and be like, man, I wish I could do that with my helmet. So why not do it now when you get the opportunity to vote for it, I guess? Yeah, I mean, it would look stupid on tv i think if everyone yeah, had, had something uh uh yeah i mean and and there is also a yes and a no portion to this uh 53 said yes 47 percent said no uh and that's out of 530 people so i i think there's still a large group of people in the league that just they don't want to see the customization they don't care uh but i mean would I be okay with like some little thing on your stick? I mean, I guess you could. I I don't know what the rule are, rule is for your customization of your stick. Like, can you only have certain color sticks? That's true. That's I've never point, I've never heard it like any like. What if you were like, I want a green stick? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know why you would or like. I mean, guys have their names on it and stuff. I mean, what's stopping you from putting like your picture on your stick? Yeah, that's true. I know Ovechkin always had his personality with that that dark gray shaded visor and his yellow laces on his skates were a big thing when he came in. Yeah, the one thing I don't like is that you can't tuck your jersey in. You okay. Know, you used to, like, you remember Gretzky used to tuck his jersey and that was like all the rage. That's like when it became such a cool thing to do. Tuck the one side of your jersey in. Like Ovechkin did it. Remember when he joined, first was in the league, he always tucked his jersey. And, yeah. uh, and now you can't. I think that that's yeah. I think that's unfortunate. Yeah, I agree. I think you know Gretzky's in his era, anyways. I think that was a way for him to kind of get away from people because you could grab at guys a little bit and yeah. keep them from you know getting a burst of speed, and so that yeah, had its for advantages sure. for sure. Uh, who is the best female hockey player in the world? Number one, uh, Marie Philip Poulin gets the top pick at thirty nine percent. Hillary Knight thirty six. Kendall Cohn Schofield, who was uh, the one in the fastest skater competition, who uh, actually beat a couple guys in the NHL, 15%. And then Emily Matheson at 1%. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I don't follow women's hockey too closely, but this list looks about right to me. <laughs> yeah, I would agree there too. <laughs> and I, I mean, frankly, other is 6.85%. So there weren't too many other votes. Like this is kind of the kind of the landscape of of women's hockey these are the best players in women's hockey so i think uh i think 
If if you know more about women's hockey, let us know. If you want to come on the show and talk it, we'd love to be educated at OT Hockey Talk. Okay. Uh, off ice, would you be in favor of relaxing game day dress code similar to the NBA? 73% said yes. So I'm sorry to the uh, 27% of the league that is over the age of 33, but I, I think that you're, you're uh, all by yourself. I think it'd be fun if they could have more flexibility in their style. Yeah, no, I, I agree, but I, I do think there needs to be still a little bit of like, hey, don't show up in like sweatpants and T-shirts. But um, ultimately, yeah, I think it would be great for guys like, you know, your P.K. Subans and your Henry Lundquist, who are very well-dressed people, to be able to, you know, kind of show off their personalities a little bit that way. Yeah, at the same time, I don't know if I, I don't know how much I, how much I personally care I feel like you should be able to, like, I guess it's, you need to have a tie, right? Is that kind of the, the standard? Yeah, a little bit. I feel like as long as you, as long as you have uh, clothes on, I'm good. Just come to the rink however you want. <laughs> That'd be my, my opinion. Um, okay. Funniest player in the NHL, Keith Yandel, 17%, Drew Doughty, 6 Marshan 5 and Kessel, 4 other 64 <laughs> percent so obviously 64. The, but keith yandel considered the funniest man in hockey almost 20 percent yeah that's that's strange i you know it's it's funny i think if roberto luongo was still in the league he would obviously probably get a majority of the votes um his twitter is just used always phenomenal but um yeah i you know what i never really like read any tweets from keith yandel don't really see much from him, so I don't, I don't really, don't really know to be quite honest. And I think maybe that's more of an, you know, you got to be in the in crowd to figure this one out. I mean, we know we know about Phil Kessel and his hot dog antics and the the jokes there. So that one, no surprise to me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so which players have the best bromance in the league? I like this one. Uh, top one goes to David Perron and Ryan O'Reilly, which of course that you know they had their uh, Halloween costumes as they when they dressed up like each other. It was pretty. Pretty epic. Uh, Joe Thornton and Brent Burns, the Beard Buddies, and Austin Matthews and Mitch Marner. I think that that one's probably here to stay if they ask this question for a while. They, they'll probably move up the list uh, as, as we go along. They're definitely the two youngest guys. Uh, Matthew Kachuk and Drew Doughty. I like that they appeared on there. Uh, 3%. <laughs> Jamie Ben, Tyler Sagan, and then Brad Marchand and Patrice Bergeron. Other 72%. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the big the big point out for me is the other right there. I mean, obviously, you know, <clears throat> you don't see a lot of these guys. Obviously, a lot of hockey players hang out with other hockey players, but um, you know, you don't really you don't really like see the bromance that often. You know, on the ice and you know, guys on the the bench. And I think uh, yeah, the 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 funny one for me is the Matthew Kachuk Drew Dryden. I feel like people are just screwing with them because they're they're at each other a little bit this season. So that one, oh yeah, and just, yeah, I'm yeah, loving it. Yep. Uh, best player to follow on social media, P.K. Subban, I would agree. Uh, Alex Ovechkin always has some pretty interesting takes, especially because he like totally comes from a different political landscape as well, being from Russia. And like is he's like a big Putin supporter, so it's just really weird to see him sometimes <laughs> talk about Russian politics. And you're like, what is happening? How like no American-born person could get away with talking positively about Putin and not just be ripped to shreds. Right. Um, Brad Marchand, 4%. Max Domi, 4%. I think Brad Marchand has like a, he has a, like some clothing line or something like that, that I think is, is growing it. Max Domi. I don't, I don't think I follow him on, on any social media. So I don't really personally, I don't really care very much about current players and their social media, unless it's like, something pretty radical about like something that's going on in with their team or something. But I don't really care what like some players doing at home when he's not playing. Yeah. I, I'm kind of with you on that one. I mean, it's, it's nice to see, you know, there are some funny things. I think I, I remember early on Alex Ovechkin. I, I started following him because he, I'm not sure if you remember a few years back when the, the, the uh, mega millions lottery got over a billion dollars and, uh, there was a video he posted where he went in and bought like a thousand dollars in lottery tickets to try to win it. 
That's but, funny. Wouldn't that be hilarious if, yeah. <laughs> if Ovechkin wins the millions, <laughs> wins a billion dollars, just retires? Yeah. <laughs> oh, forget it. So that's the kind of stuff that I would be keen on seeing. But outside of that, like in your daily lives, especially now, like I, I don't really care. I'm with you on that one a little bit. Uh, which player sh- isn't on social media but should be? Twenty five percent goes to Sidney Crosby. Uh, then Joe Thornton, Tyler Ennis, and Jay Bullmeister get some uh, some love there. Tyler Ennis is probably the most random person outside of Nick Cousins on this entire poll. All uh, right. I don't know what Tyler Ennis does that would make him so interesting, but hey, you got on this list. There you go. Uh, I would like if Sidney Crosby had a. I would follow Sidney Crosby. Uh, oh, his, absolutely. Him on hit him him on spit and chicklets was great. <laughs> so if you haven't heard that episode, I suggest going back, digging it up, and and listening to it because it's it's well worth the listen, uh, especially if you like hearing some insider stuff. And of course, him and uh, him and uh, what's his name on the show who played with them, they uh, they they talk quite a bit. Uh, who is the best nickname? Tuna. Tuna Tatar at eight percent, Pasta Pasternak at seven percent, uh, the Bread Man at five, and Christian Stinky Fisher at two point six nine percent. And then, of course, you've got other at seventy six. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean, there's there's lots of nicknames. None of them are. I mean, I I think that uh, my favorite one is Pickles. Yeah, absolutely. That's my favorite one. Uh, but yep. I, I don't know how Christian Stinky Fisher got his. <laughs> I feel like I need yeah. to go look that up. That's that's a good question. I think I, again, I kind of I love Tuna Tatars. I mean, just because as a Red Wings fan, he's had that since his days here. So it's just it's always been a favorite of mine for sure. Yeah, it's a it's an ongoing one. Breadman's pretty good too. Yeah, uh, who's the best golfer? I like this one. Uh, Joe Pavelski. By far the most votes, 15.8%. Tyler Bozak, 5%. Justin Schultz at 4 Cal Clutterbuck, Mark Stone, and Greg McKegg, 3.81. I Excuse me, he's the most random name on this list. <laughs> Greg frickin' McKegg, former Maple Leaf. I believe he was a Maple Leaf draft pick. Oh, yeah, okay. Uh, but, yeah, obviously Joe Bavelski is uh, far and away the best golfer in the NHL. Yeah. That's maybe not the guy I would pick. Just I, I don't know. Just out of just looking at guys in the league, I would think someone maybe a little bit taller and lengthy might be, or even a guy like oh I don't know, like Shea Weber maybe. But who knows? I mean, yeah, somebody honestly, that can just boom the exactly drive it three hundred <laughs> plus. Yeah, and figure out the short game later. But uh, I mean, outside of like European football, I mean, golf is really like the other game that I, I know a lot of hockey players like to play. So. Um, no surprise that this is a category for sure. Yeah. Uh, okay. Well, on to arenas and teams. This is our last section of this poll. Uh, the best visitors dressing room. Uh, we had Pittsburgh Penguins at six point eight percent. The Red Wings get a hefty twenty three percent. Vegas Golden Knights at twenty six percent, and the Edmonton Oilers with thirty eight percent. They get by far the best dressing room there. Uh, your thoughts on this? Yeah, I'm. Kind of not surprised to see Vegas and Detroit up here. I mean, they both have relatively new arenas. And, uh, you know, I mean, you and I, we've been to Little Caesars Arena. It's an immaculate place. Uh, I can only imagine that the visitor's dressing room is no less immaculate inside. But Edmonton Oilers and Rogers Place, I just, that one's weird to me. I just, I've never really seen much of the inside. So can't really, can't really say too much. Well, they had to make the dressing room nice or else nobody would want to play there. That's true. <laughs> I, I'm I'm certain of it. Like I'm certain they said, well, okay, we need to make the visiting dressing room nice so that people like our arena. Like the fact that this is number one. I mean, you got to be thinking as a player if you know if you're going to go to Edmonton, at least hey, maybe I can go there. It's it's a really nice arena, a really nice facility. I I, I would think that that's got to be some reasoning behind it. Uh, okay, best jersey in the league. Uh, quite a few. Original sixes, and uh, we have we've got the Rangers and the Leafs and the Golden Knights all basically at six percent, uh, and then the Chicago Blackhawks at twenty eight point two five percent. I I think that that's hundred percent right. They have 
the best jerseys. I, I mean, I am surprised that the Red Wings aren't on this list, to be honest. I, I feel like yeah. the Red Wings have a better jersey than the Rangers. Yeah, I would definitely agree with that. I think the Red Wings, I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I, I like the Vegas jersey with the gold and the red trimming. Uh, but to me, that's, I don't know, there's something about that original six, right? When you look at the Leafs jersey, uh, the Wings, even the Habs, I'm kind of surprised not to see on here as well. But um, obviously, yeah, I would probably agree. I think the Blackhawks, best jersey in hockey, but surprisingly not to see the Wings in here either. Yeah. Uh, which arena has the best ice? Montreal takes the cake 61, 31%. Edmonton, 16%. The Bell MTS place in Winnipeg, 11%. And the Las Vegas Golden Knights with their T-Mobile Arena at eight percent. So that's uh, obviously people like playing at the T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, I think people just like being in Vegas in general, if you ask me. But <laughs> I, I think you're not wrong there. Uh, okay, the last one on this list I think is the the biggest runaway of the entire poll. Who is the best NHL team mascot? And uh, you've got Yuppie at two point two percent. Bailey for the Kings, Yuppie's the Habs. Bailey at 2.5%. The Howler for the Arizona Coyotes at 2.8%. Nash in the Nashville at 2.8%. And then Gritty at 69.72%. Honestly, I'm only surprised it's not higher. I actually am too. I mean, you look at when he came into the league, right? They they had a press conference for this freaking mascot. They, I mean, Philly does it right when you when you talk about mascots, right? I mean, the Philly fanatic, and you know, no surprise here with Gritty. It's just watching the content too that he puts out on social media, or at least the team does with Gritty, is just is phenomenal. Yeah, the but I th- I think I mean he's he's up there with the best mascots in sports. Period. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, that's our uh, that's that's the player poll. Uh, let us know what you thought. If you uh, you think somebody should be on that poll that wasn't, uh, hit us on Twitter at OT Hockey Talk. And uh, our next show will be the Columbus Blue Jackets top 10 all time. It'll be a pretty fascinating list. Looking forward to, uh, to joining you then. Justin, I'll talk to you soon. All right, we'll see you.